So what we have in front of you today is the Nike Motiva. In 2023, this is the new Nike walking shoe, and it's kind of an interesting one. So as it appears, it may look like a cheap, generic Nike comfort shoe, uh, but it actually may surprise you when you try these on. Aimed at walking, not running, these deliver a somewhat unique experience on feet, so I wanted to go ahead and discuss that with you guys. Some pros and cons about these Nike Motivas uh, after wearing these for a handful of days. So let's go ahead and jump in. Hey, before we move on, I want to let you guys know of a sponsorship on the channel that is for eWin Gaming, and you can save 25% off of your gaming desk or your gaming chair. Now, I personally have a gaming chair and the desk in my room, but I also have a gaming desk and chair for Harrison uh, because he really, really wanted one. Well, of course, Maddie's now four years old and she wanted one as well. So now we have a new pink gaming desk and chair that we had delivered for her per her request because she actually really likes the color pink. So we have three different E-Win desks and three different E-Win chairs. One thing about the chairs that they're known for is that they actually support weight for up to 400 pounds. Most chairs usually do 300 pounds or so. This is for the bigger boys though, if you need something a little bit bigger. The pink set was really nice. It has a gaming desk and chair and you can get 25% off of that. Otherwise, there's other options there you can slip through. But use my link or the code in the description for that 25% off. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. What game would you be playing on your new desk if you had one? Uh, personally, we're playing Tears of the Kingdom. Harrison actually just beat it. It's crazy. I don't know how he's so good at the game. And then Maddie's gonna be all about Roblox on her desk. She's been wanting to like record playing Roblox. But anyways, if you guys try Ewan out, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think about the products. We've been happy with ours for years and we're excited that Maddie has actually added a gaming desk to her room as well. So if you guys are interested in buying the Nike Motiva, I'll link them down in the description below. It's $110 at retail. And if you guys use my link in the description, it does give me a little bit of a kickback and it directly supports my channel. Greatly appreciate it if you guys do that. I do have the older pair of Invisible Runs out here for a side-by-side -side comparison because honestly, there's a lot of similarities between these two models. Uh, even though one is for running and one is for walking, I do like that this shoe does have a maximum stack of cushion and it's a pretty nice experience on feet. So we'll start off with some of the pros, get into some of the cons, and then go over uh, what the description is from Nike about the product and then a final summary at the end. First pro I wanted to mention right out the gate is the price point of $110. It's nice to be able to get a comfort sneaker, a walking sneaker, something with nice cushioning on it for $110. Obviously the Invisible Runs is an amazingly comfortable shoe, but $180 price point versus $110. A $70 savings right out the gate is going to steer a lot of people towards this shoe instead of the Invincible Runs. And is it worth it or not? Honestly, I mean, my opinion about the shoe is it's pretty darn good. It's very comfortable on feet. There is no crazy proprietary foam on the midsole, so it's not Zoom X, it's not React, it's not even Cushlon from what I could tell, but it's actually pretty soft underfoot. Also, another pro about the shoe is the fact that it is wide foot friendly. So like the Invincible Runs, this shoe fits pretty much exactly the same as the Invincible Run. If you look at the outsole, it actually is a little bit more wide foot friendly, which is crazy to believe because the Invincible Runs is very wide foot friendly. Very nice for wider feet. Maybe not extreme wide feet, but if you have an average wide foot, like this fits me just fine, true to size. Happy with the results on that. And overall, the comfort of the shoe is definitely a pro in my opinion. You throw it on, there is a really interesting squish feel to the entire shoe. There is a little bit of a roller motion in these as well. So it's almost like a squish and roll sort of vibe when you're walking around in these things. And, and honestly, it feels like a pretty elite walking shoe when you're just uh, cruising around, walking around and stuff. And it's not as soft and squishy as the Invincible Run. Obviously with the Zoom X, it's a lot softer. These weigh in at like 11 ounces and these are like 10.3 or something like that. So these are a little bit heavier than the others, but all in all, a pretty complete package for $110. Also, I'll mention, even though there is a large stack of foam on it, the stability is actually quite nice. It's not the best stability, obviously. If you want something more stable, you're gonna want a lower stack of foam. But for considerations of a higher stack of foam, the stability and the build quality is actually pretty nice. I like that the back part of the shoe sticks out quite a bit. It gives you kind of a platform to, to rest your foot on, uh, considering the massive stack of foam. Another pro in my opinion, something I just mentioned a little bit was the rolling motion of the shoe. It is a very functional shoe. It's something you can wear uh, on a regular basis and be really comfortable. It's kind of like a do everything shoe. I'd say you could probably use this as a running shoe if you wanted to because the heel toe transition does feel pretty nice. There is a lot of bumps on the bottom of the shoe and I'll get more into that in kind of the con section, but it is kind of interesting because you don't feel it as bad as you would think because it looks pretty aggressive. On feet though, the heel strike is nice and then the transition to the toe uh, feels nice as well. Not only the cushioning from the midsole, but the cushioning on the upper is nice also. You have nice cushioning on the heel of the shoe as well as on the tongue. It's not overly extreme. It's not as plush as the Invincible Run 2s at least, but it is nice and it's definitely enough to feel comfortable. For $110 versus $180, it is a nice alternative to the Invincible Run line in my opinion. However, there are a couple cons about the model that I wanted to mention, just throwing them out there for you guys. One, the bumpy outsole. It is kind of interesting. I don't know if I love it or not. Like it is different looking. Obviously from the sidewall, you could see the little 
wibbly wobbly lines up through but then you can also see them in the middle of the shoes so it looks like they tried to make this midsole and had marbles stuck underneath and then it made this really crazy like wavy look to the shoe and i'll tell you it doesn't feel crazy and wavy on foot the foam is actually really soft and it's not bad but it's uh but it's something that does feel a little bit interesting and as you're stepping slowly or like on a flat surface like a hard cement or something like that you do notice it going bop 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 like you notice it you feel you feel it a little bit because it does stand out a little bit it does feel that way on foot a little bit as well i would say my biggest con about the shoe is the fact that it doesn't use a branded foam on it like nike is known for their branding right the nike swooshes on the sides and stuff but then it's also known for its branding on its nike air and then the nike react and nike zoom x and nike cushion even like this one doesn't have a proprietary foam on it and for a brand that surrounds itself by proprietary products it's just kind of like a miss in my opinion it's like is it too cheap for zoom x is it not good enough for react like i'm not really sure what the reason is for not having the branding on it it does feel pretty soft it feels like i would say almost like cushion on the midsole maybe it is cushion i have no idea it's not as soft as zoom x and hand as you're squishing it but it feels pretty good and it seems like kind of a miss that they're not branding it properly again the price point at 110 might deter people maybe it's like the off branding like you know how Campbell's soup has a camel's label and then the generic brand has a generic label on it even though it's the same contents inside maybe this doesn't have the nike react branding or nike cushion branding on it but it is nike react they just don't want people to know that you're paying that lower price for it uh, with other more expensive models on the on the market. I'm not exactly sure, but it's weird to me and ultimately it's a comfortable shoe at $110 just with not all the bells and whistles of the branding. So it is that. Also a slight con, it's not overly breathable. I mean, it's not necessarily a running shoe so they don't want you to be sweating it out like in the shoe, but I'm wearing my running shoes casually. I'm wearing my walking shoes casually, my Jordans and you know, like those shoes casually as well. So the fact that it's just made for casual use, it is a knit upper on here and stuff, but it's not super breathable. So it's lower on the tier in breathability in my opinion. And as I mentioned, it's a little bit heavier than the average shoe in it's like category, I guess. I mean, it's 11 ounces instead of like 10 ounces. So it's not like crazy heavy or anything. Like the Skechers version of the walking shoe that I did a review on my channel. If you guys missed that one, go check that one out because Honestly, head to head, these versus the Skechers walking shoes, comfort wise, Skechers are better. But considering the $30 savings, you're getting a lot of bang for your buck at 110 versus 140 of the Skechers versus 180 of the Invincible Runs. If money is no object, I'd go the higher end. Personally, I like the Invincible Runs. It's one of my favorite. The one, two, or three are all good. Uh, if you want the Nike branding, obviously this is a better buy than the Skechers because the Skechers Go Walks are Skechers. People have, there's a stigma there. People don't want to buy those. I totally get that. And you just want to have something comfortable from Nike. This is probably the best walking shoe that you're going to get for that price point. So that kind of covers the pros and cons. What Nike says about its own product, the Nike Motiva helps you step through whatever the day brings at your pace. It's uniquely patterned outsole and exaggerated rocker combined to give a super smooth, cushioned and comfortable ride. This means you can walk, jog, or run comfortably and come back for your next leisurely stroll confidently. It gives you optimal support for your every move every day. Comfort Groove Innovation, a uniquely patterned outsole that makes every day an extra soft ride absorbs the bumps along the way. It creates a sort of piston effect which allows the foam to compress a little bit more giving you an extra cushion needed to offset the ground contact stride after stride. The exaggerated rocker on the outsole helps propel you forward and make every step you take as smooth as possible. I mean, there's a lot of words there and at the end of the day, it's good. And I don't think that these extra bumps here are necessary. I think it's more gimmicky than anything. I mean, it's idea of smoothing out bumps under your foot as you're walking around. Meanwhile, it like actually creates more bumps into your foot. It feels like that technology is probably not gonna last in it, but if it didn't do anything different, I guess it would just look like a regular shoe. And ultimately it doesn't affect the overall performance of the shoe. Again, you put it on, it feels a little bit weird at first, but like it's totally normal after you wear them for like two minutes. Like it's not uncomfortable, let's say, but it's something you notice a little bit. And you're like, oh, that's a little bit different. It's not bad necessarily. It's not uncomfortable, but it's just a little bit different the first time you put that on your feet with that weird little bumps in the back. But all in all, I'd say for $110, solid purchase honestly if it wasn't good i would actually just return them but i put them on as soon as i got them wore them out and about wore them to my kids baseball wore them to my parents house just wore them through the parks and everything and it's a shoe that i found quite comfortable and something i could see having a higher price tag than 110 dollars if they actually added like nike react branding to it or something like that but i do like the fact that it is a lower price point and more lucrative to those people that just want to spend 110 dollars to to an average consumer out there this is an expensive shoe. $110 is a lot of money for a pair of shoes. They're not going to even look at this shoe because it's $180. So this one is a little bit more affordable and people are going to look at this and go, shoot, it's $110. Will it perform like this one? Or is it going to be as comfortable as that one? Like I'm telling you, no, it's not going to be as good as that one, but it's going to be good. And you try this on 
it's going to be like a 4K TV. Like I mentioned in the past, you buy a Sony 4K TV, you buy a Samsung 4K TV, both of them are going to have exceptional quality. The Samsung or Sony might have richer colors or, you know, darker blacks or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, both of these deliver something really, really good. They're both very comfortable shoes as soon as you put them on feet. And I don't think you're going to be disappointed when you try these on. Hopefully this has been a little bit informative for you guys knowing they're not the most breathable out there. Obviously there's tons more breathable shoes out there, but it's not bad. Uh, the comfort is there. It's a little bit of a heavier shoe. And the overall midsole is actually really quite nice as well. There's a lot of traction on the outsole as well. So the durability for the outsole is going to be pretty nice as well. But overall, leave a comment in the comment section if you've tried these shoes and you like them or dislike them. Leave a comment for other people to see. And I appreciate you all for stopping by and watching the video. If you guys want to buy a pair of these, I will link them in the description. If you guys are interested in the bigger brother, like the Invisible Run 3s, I'll link those in the description as well. Uh, but not bad for the price point. And I uh, appreciate you all for stopping by and watching. If you guys have other shoes that you're interested in having me review, uh, from Nike or other brands leave a comment in the comment section what uh, the shoes are and hopefully I'll find some interest in being able to buy those shoes and check them out myself but have a good one thank you again for stopping by and watching it and hopefully see you back for some more content soon all right peace guys